Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. So today I am going to be doing my October wrap up and if you follow me on any other platform you will know that October was an insane reading month for me. I completed 26 books and I'm in the middle of three like significantly into three books. So 29 books <laughs> in October. Um, it's insane. I don't know how I read that much, but um, we're here to wrap up all of them because I have so many books to talk about. I'm going to try to do them in as cohesive of an order as possible, but I'm also not going to get super in detail with all of these books, um, like synopsis and stuff. I never do synopsises anyways, but like that, like, yeah, we, ha we have very little time for so many books. Yeah, if you guys are interested, there is my page tracker. Honestly, I'm not even gonna lie, that's not even that crazy of a page tracker. I don't know what happened. But, so I'm going to first just talk about the three books I'm in the middle of, and then I'm going to get into books that I read for pleasure, and then books for school, because people don't care about that as much. <laughs> So the three books that I am in the middle of are Frankly in Love by David Yoon. I'm about, I'm like almost done with this. I'm like 330 pages into this one. This is a YA contemporary. So far I am enjoying this. Um, I didn't love the kind of, I guess, twist you could say. Um, halfway through this book, wasn't a huge fan, but I'm gonna see how it wraps up before I say anything else, so. And then I am shockingly into Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I am 120 pages into this and I'm freaking loving it. I can't, I, I'm, I, I have one starred and DNF'd like three of her books because I thought they were horrible, but I just kept holding out thinking that this might be better and it is. I'm loving it so far. Can't wait to continue reading it. 120 pages into that one. And for class, I'm like 200 pages, 200 pages into Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. This is the first time I'm reading this. Not loving it. I don't see the hype for it, but we're, I'm, I'm still far from the end. So we'll see if Mr. Darcy redeems himself. I'm told that he does. Right now he's a dick face. So Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to kick off my pleasure reading with my rereads of this month. I did three rereads, which I didn't even realize until just now. But I reread Bunny by Mona Award, which I literally read last month, but I got a physical edition and I had to read it because I had to do this to it. <laughs> yeah, um, I had a lot of things to highlight and say about this book. This book is going to be either my favorite book of the year or at least very like top two or three of the year. I freaking love this book. It's amazing. Not for everyone. It's about people in college, writing, bunnies. It's weird. I love it though. <laughs> And then I reread Truly Devious and The Vanishing Stare by Maureen Johnson. I really wanted to reread these this month because the third book is coming out in January and I love this series. It is like my favorite YA series at the moment because I'm not a huge fan of YA but these books have captured my heart. Um, I love them and Truly Devious I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars which I think is the same as when I first read it and The Vanishing Stare I actually upped to a 4.25 out of 5 star rather than a 4 star just because I think I really enjoyed it this time even more than the first time and I am so excited to read the third book when it comes out. This was really fun also because my mom didn't even realize I was rereading these and she decided to pick them up for the first time so we got to talk about them but yeah those are my rereads for the month and now I'm gonna get into just the reads I've done. A lot of these I read for Spookathon um, so I have a whole vlog that you guys can watch for that but let's just get on into it. Alright, so the first spooky book I read this month was The Troop by Nick Cutter. I've obviously been hearing so much about this ever since Natasha from My Reading is Odd read this. I feel like it has blown up on booktube. This is about a boy scout troop who basically gets infested with a parasite and are like quarantined without really knowing that they're quarantined and all of this. I really really enjoyed this but I didn't find it scary. I love like parasites and like the human body which sounds so gross but I think is fascinating anatomy and physiology were like my favorite class in school so mostly I just found this book really really cool not that scary but if you're scared of like parasites and stuff this is gonna freak you out so bad I gave this a four out of five star I loved the ending and I loved the kind of 
not dual perspective but like going back and forth from the boys on the island and like everything that was happening to like kind of present day where people are talking about what was happening but yeah I loved this it was great and then I read such a surprise Rise. This was a book that Dylan gave me for my birthday and that is Compound by S.A. Bodine. This book, first off, I thought it was just a dystopian YA novel so I had expectations going into this but I was totally wrong. It's more like a post-apocalyptic novel I guess you could call it. It's basically uh, told from this boy's point of view that his family um, his dad, like, made this compound underground just in case, like, a nuclear war broke out because he's part of the government and he was like, oh, I know that something's gonna happen maybe eventually, so he wanted to be repaired. So he, this family goes down to this compound for six years and it's six years that they've been in here and the boy is basically like, I want answers, I want to do stuff with my life, like, none of this really makes sense and it's about him kind of finding out answers to like what happened to his world and stuff and also kind of going against being in this compound and I really enjoyed it I kept saying if I read this in like middle school this would have been like a favorite book of all time but because I did read it later it wasn't like as amazing <laughs> but it did deal with some fucked up shit and it was a really cool twist um so I give it a four out of five stars if you like YA I really recommend this and then I read a book that was given to me by Osusumi Books. I talked about them in a video about my Japanese literature recommendations that they gave me this book and I read it and I loved it. And that is The Devotion of Suspect X by um, Kigo Higashino. This is a Japanese thriller. I don't think I could call it horror. It's just definitely just a thriller that basically is about a woman who her ex-husband keeps stalking her and like showing up in her life and something happens that makes her kill him and basically trying to hide the body. All of this. This book I it does have a cop element. One thing I really like about Japanese stories is that the couple I've read have been told from both the murderer's point of view and the cops so I don't mind it as much. I usually don't really like cop detective thrillers but it works because I'm also getting her point of view like as the murderer I guess and the cops figuring it out. Plus in this book we also have another element of just like this genius guy trying to figure out what was happening. The ending, oh my god, I was shook. I was so surprised because I was kind of like, how, like, what is going to be the twist of this? Because we are following her as the murderer. So, like, we know what happened. And oh my god, I was blown away. Um, I think I gave this like a 4, maybe 4.25 out of 5 stars, but I would even say a 4.5 out of 5 stars. If you are a thriller fan, I really recommend this. Like, I have never read anything like this one and I loved it and I will definitely be checking out more of this author very soon because, oh, it was so good. I loved it. <laughs> All right, and then I read all three of my Junji Ito that I have. Um, I'm gonna talk about them in order of like least favorite to favorite. So first off, I have Shiver by Junji Ito, which is his collection of short stories. The thing I wanna say about people going into Junji Ito, just because I had very high expectations because of how people talked about him, I would say he is definitely a horror author, but these aren't like keep you awake at night scary, I guess. Um, they're more just really unsettling and weird, more than horrific and terrifying, which I was under the impression that I was gonna be like up all night, like freak the fuck out because of these books. And that's just not the case, honestly. Um, this short story collection was a little bit of a letdown just because of that and mostly these stories are just really freaking weird more than scary to me um but I did enjoy it. I give this a three out of five stars and um just to tell you my favorite story in this is The Long Dream and my least favorite is Greased but yeah we had a five star in here and we had a two star in here so it's kind of like I always just end up giving short story collections three stars because that seems fair but this was only my least favorite of these three Junji Ito that I read. Oh no, this stack is gonna get so big. And then I read Gyo. This is my second favorite, I guess. Um, this is about like in Japan all of a sudden fish can walk and they grow legs and they start coming out of the ocean and like weird shit starts happening. And this one was 
so weird. Like, it just made me sit there and be like, how the hell did Junji Ito come up with this? <laughs> like, where, what is his brain? It's so freaking weird. It has, this one had probably some of the most, like, horrific, like, imagery to me. Uzumaki definitely did too, but this one was just, like, not horrific, but weird imagery. Like, I never thought I'd have to think about this in my brain. Gyo, the story, I would probably give a three out of five star, but in the back of this book, it, as the bonus story, is my favorite, like, comic ever, uh, The Enigma at Arigama Fault, which I've talked about so much on this channel, I feel like, um, but it's a five out of five star, so I just kind of have to, like, give this as a whole a 3.5 out of 5 star because I know Amigara Fault is like the very very back but like I love it. <laughs> so I gave this as a whole 3.5 out of 5 star for Gyo plus the bonus stories. And then I read the one that everyone loves so much, Uzumaki. I gave this a 4 out of 5 star, just throwing that out there. I really loved, like absolutely loved, like this much of the beginning and then like the very end. The middle-y part just it got away from me a little bit. I was kind of like I don't care. <laughs> I don't care anymore. If you've read this it was kind of when like stuff started happening to the town like the town getting destroyed. That's when I kind of stopped caring that much. I don't know it just wasn't what I was expecting at all. Um, I definitely there was definitely some crazy scary imagery in this and I love his art style so much and it was just such an interesting story like this is about a town that becomes obsessed with spirals and like you go into it being like I know what this is about but what the fuck does that mean and like you find out what that means pretty quick. <laughs> it is crazy. Again Junji Ito's mind. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 star. It was definitely my favorite of Junji Ito's, but not like a new favorite thing, which I was expecting, which is sad, but 4 out of 5 stars. Also this month, a non-spooky book I read this month was Dark Done by Jay Kristoff. I have an entire reading vlog for this, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it. I gave it a 4.75 out of 5 stars, which I would remain by that, like 4.5 to 4.75 out of 5 star. Not a full 5 star though. Um, I loved this book. I hate the last two pages of it. That's all I'm gonna say. Go watch my vlog if you've read this and want to talk to me about it in spoilery detail. I do love this series as a whole. It is like the only fantasy series that I've been like religiously keeping up with um, since I read the first book. So I do love this. I do recommend the Nevernight trilogy so highly, but those last two pages. <sighs> Another book I actually did read for Spookathon, I guess you could call this pretty spooky, is Alice by Christina Henry. I've been reading quite a few Christina Henry's. I love her book Lost Boy, all of that. This is her really fucked up Alice in Wonderland retelling. This is dark. I'm going to just tell you guys this has so many trigger warnings. It is a dark book. Dark. Dark, dark, dark. Lots of rape, sexual assault, gore, violence, murder. Like, dark Alice in Wonderland retelling. I did really enjoy it though and I gave it a 3.75 out of 5 star I think. I don't think I'm gonna continue mostly because I was talking to my friend Adele about this and she said that the second one just really isn't worth it and I wasn't really into the second one anyways so I'm just gonna read this as a standalone. I do know there's a second book but I'm just gonna keep it as a standalone because I really liked the ending of this. So if you guys like Alice in Wonderland which I know a lot of people do definitely check this one out. It's worth a read. Really enjoyed it and I love Christina Henry. I want to read her mermaid book so bad. And then I read another book given to me by a good friend for my birthday and this is from Connor and he gave me If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. Oh guys I love this book so much. I'm so mad at myself for taking so long to read this because he has been hyping this up to me since I read Birthday by Meredith Russo in the summer and he was like, hey, you have to read it, you have to read it. And I kept being like, yeah, 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 I'll get, I'll get to it. And he finally sent it to me for my birthday so I'm like, okay, I gotta actually read it. So I read it and I freaking love this book so much. I gave this a five out of five star. Um, this is about a trans girl who is in high school and she was bullied at her previous high school so she's going to a new high school and kind of things that happen there. This book should be taught 
in high school classrooms. This was so powerful and so profound and beautiful. Even the author's note, like author's notes are usually like, you know, happy and like, oh, thanks to this person, this person, this person for like helping me write this book. This author's note is literally like just Meredith Russo talking about how shit everything is and what we need to do as people to not be shit and I loved this so much and I was crying at work while I was reading this <laughs> and I just I love this so much if you want an LGBTQ plus book check this one out check out Birthday by Meredith Russo also I loved this so much so powerful definitely one of those books that I can already tell is just gonna stay with me forever then I read a new release that has the most beautiful cover and that is The Gracier by Kim Liggett. I decided to pick this up kind of on a whim. I'd seen a couple of people talking about it but I was at the store I just decided to grab it. Um, this is, it's like marketed as The Handmaid's Tale meets Lord of the Flies. Yeah, it's Handmaid's Tale meets Lord of the Flies which is weird because Wilder Girls is also Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies retellings 2019. This is basically about a community that believes that girls, I believe they're 16 years old, when they get this magic that pulls men away from their wives and like their very essence is an aphrodisiac and like they need to be sent away to get rid of all of their magic so that they don't like have sex with men who aren't their husbands. This actually reminded me a lot of Only Ever Yours by Louise O'Neill because at the beginning there are a bunch of girls and a couple of them get picked by like the top boys to be their wives, all of that. There's our main character who really doesn't want to be a wife, she just wants to like go off on her own, all of that. This book is so good in parts in so bad in certain parts. It was really hard for me to rate it. I think I ended up giving like a 3, 3.5 out of 5 star. The writing is weirdly beautiful in certain spots and I wanted to highlight it and then like really basic in other parts and the story is really cliche in parts and then really really profound and amazing in other parts. Like the conversations about women and women's bodies and like agency and stuff like that was awesome and also like kind of the twist in this book I loved and it was just such an interesting book and I also I took a history of witches class a semester ago like spring semester in my undergrad and this was reminding me so much of that it has very witchy vibes but then there is like the most cliche insta love I've ever read like and then there's just a lot of girl hate, which really sucked. So it's it's a very much a give and take book. I enjoyed reading it, but I'm, I'm just not sure. I don't know if I can recommend it because it does have some awesome parts to it, but has some also really shit parts. So if you're interested in it, I do recommend picking it up. But if you're not, I feel like you can skip it. But this cover is gorgeous. So I'm gonna keep it on my shelf. <laughs> Oh, all right, y'all. And then I read a book that is challenging Bunny as my top favorite book of the year. And that is Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. I don't have the book because I gave it to my mom the second I bought it because I was like, you need to read this right now. This is Stephen Chbosky's 750 page adult n horror novel. <laughs> Stephen Chbosky is the guy who wrote Perks of Being a Wallflower. Yeah, this is a really weird second book. <laughs> This book, oh my god, it's five stars. I already said it's Challenging Bunny as my number one book of the year. One of my favorite books of all time. This is the only book I read this month that scared the shit out of me. Haley read this before me and she messaged me like, Kate, I don't want to spoil anything, but you have a very specific trigger that's in this book. It's like Stephen Chbosky fucking wrote this to scare the shit out of Kate Files specifically. Because if you guys don't know, I have a really bad phobia of deer. I was attacked by a deer when I was 10. And ever since, I'm really fucking scared of deer. Like, petrified of deer. Went to the zoo one time, there were deer. I had to be carried out of the zoo by a security member because I was fucking on the ground sobbing. Like, really scared of deer. <laughs> 
and this book weirdly uses deer as a scare tactic so um that's not a spoiler it is like from like the first couple of chapters um so if you're also petrified of deer just be warned <laughs> but this book oh my god it on the surface is about a woman and her child a single mom who her husband killed himself and they kind of keep moving from place to place and she just really wants what's best for her son so she goes to this place gets him in a really good school and the boy goes missing for six days he comes back and stuff just isn't really right about him anymore and also he's like a genius now and then you read from the boy's point of view and he has an imaginary friend who is telling him to make a treehouse on the very surface that is what this book is about. There's so much more to it. I can't say any more because there'll be spoilers, but this book was the wildest ride I've ever had in my life. It had me gasping out loud. I accidentally listened to the audio of this while I was driving home at night in the rain and I wanted to die. It was so scary. This is so scary. It is so emotional. The ending is fucking insane. The way I have described this is Stephen King horror atmosphere meets Haruki Murakami. Weird as fuck what's going on. I don't know kind of aspects. <laughs> I feel like I keep seeing some negative reviews that keep calling this Christian fiction. And I just, ooh. It really, I really, I honestly feel bad for people who can't enjoy a book that has some conversations about religion and God because they think it's Christian fiction. Like, they specifically didn't like this book because it was Christian fiction. And first off, it's, this isn't Christian fiction. It's not. It's, it's really not. <laughs> and also, I just feel bad for people who can't enjoy a piece of literature because they're not religious, but that's just me. Um, I loved this so much and I really recommend it. I don't think it's gonna be for everyone but it's amazing and if you have also seen those reviews calling it Christian fiction please ignore them because it's not. Again five out of five stars. New favorite book of all time. One of my favorite books of the year. Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. And then I also read a graphic novel called My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness. Honestly, this is a book I saw come through my department at, li at the library that I work at and I literally picked it up and read it in like an hour at my desk. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed this actually. I feel like I see a lot of really bad reviews of this. But I personally really enjoyed it. Maybe it's because I'm a gay and I experienced loneliness. I don't know. I really enjoyed it though. I gave it a four star. Again, it's exactly what the title says. It's about a lesbian experiencing loneliness and she also talks a lot about parent pressure and pressure to do well because I believe she's Japanese so there's a lot of that to it. I really liked it. I don't know why everyone hates it. Four stars. <laughs> I also had a book that I DNF'd but I will be talking about that in a separate video of DNF's of the last couple of months but I did DNF now entering Adamsville by Francesca Zappia if people were wondering. Oh, the last thing that I read for pleasure was the Blake Crouch short story Summer Frost. Guys, I I saw this. It was $1.99 on Audible. It's a very short audiobook. It's like two hours. And so it was only $1.99. So I picked it up. I listened to it. Fucking loved it. I gave it a 4.25 out of 5 star, mostly just because I wanted it to be longer. It's a short story about a woman, a lesbian woman. How did Blake Crouch write so well from a lesbian woman's point of view? Someone tell me why men, other men can't write women characters and he embodied a lesbian woman? Like, I, I don't know. But this is about a lesbian woman who is dealing with family trouble but also at her job she has invented an AI that is like way superior to most AIs. This is mostly a sci-fi until the end where it gets spooky. It gets spooky. I'm happy I read this during spooky season because it gets spooky. So be warned. This is a bit spooky. I loved it. If you're a big fan of Blake Crouch, definitely pick this one up. All right, and now I'm getting into some books that I read for class. I'm gonna go through these really fast, but also if you don't care anymore, bye. This is the end of my fiction reading. See you later. So first off, I'm just gonna really quickly say, cause I'm not even gonna talk about them. I read one, two, three, four books about animals, parasites, mosquitoes, 
and I don't care about any of them. I gave them between a 1 and a 3.5 star. Um, they were malarial subjects, why look at animals, the parasite, and rules of experts. I'm not even gonna put them on the screen because I know no one cares about them. If you really care and want to do a project about mosquitoes, DM me, I'll tell you what they were. <laughs> But besides those, I also read Othello by Shakespeare. This is my seventh time reading Shakespeare. It's like my, or no, it's my sixth time reading Shakespeare. I've done it six times for school, between high school, undergrad, and now graduate class. Um, yeah, I don't care about Othello that much. I'm just gonna say it straight up. Don't think it's Shakespeare's best work. I think it's also getting to me because I have done it so many times. So, three stars. It's Othello. Everyone, I hope, knows what Othello is about. It's about a black guy marrying a white woman and they die. I also read The Man Eater of Malagudi. This was for my post-colonialism class. I didn't really care that much about it. I give like a 2.5 out of 5 stars. Yeah, it was, it was whatever. It was fine. Didn't really care that much. For another class, we read Nature Poem by Tommy Pico. This is a poem I think I gave it like 2 stars when I first read it, but I would probably bump it up to like 3. This is an indigenous writer writing a nature poem, and it's a lot of metaphors and stuff. I don't know how someone could enjoy this without going to a class for it, but I read it. I'm not a poetry person. It was fine. It was queer. It was indigenous. Cool. And then I read two plays for my Othello unit in class, and we read Harlem Duet by Janet Sears. Really confusing. I didn't really like this one. I thought it changed Othello too much. Like, how much can you change a play and still call it an adaptation? To be honest, that's my big question with this one. And yeah, I give this a two star. That's it. And I also read Desdemona by Toni Morrison. I actually really enjoyed this. I gave it a four star, which is higher than Othello. But I really liked this. It's from kind of Desdemona's point of view, but also talking a lot about Africans in the time of Othello. And yeah, I actually really enjoyed this. It was cool. It made me think a lot about the original Othello. So yeah, I read that. And then the final book that I read this month and for class was Disgraced by J.M. Kutsi, which I have already read Waiting for the Barbarians. I've literally posted this, that I read this, and like got so many DMs and comments saying I needed to read Waiting for the Barbarians. I read Waiting for the Barbarians. I gave it five stars at the beginning of the year. So there you go. I gave this one a four out of five stars, but the more I work with it, the more I do like it. Maybe it's like a 4.5 out of five star now, but this is interesting post-colonialism South Africa um, about a man who rapes a girl, gets disgraced, and then he goes and lives with his daughter. Shit happens, there's lots of stuff with dogs, and yeah. I gave it four stars. I liked it. It was good. Anyways, those are the two giant stacks of books that I read this month. <laughs> How did I do that? <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I actually managed to make this not insanely long, so I'm gonna stop talking. Anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this ridiculously long video, this ridiculously long wrap-up, so many books. I hope you guys got some book recommendations. Definitely tell me down below if you have read any of these books or if you picked them up because I am mentioning them here. Anyways, I love you all and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!